Hey all, uh, today I'm going to show you how to use the easing Photoshop script. Um, I've been a Photoshop animator for a couple of years now and one of the things I've always wanted Adobe to put into their program was the ability to add some ease in or ease out to the tweens. So currently in Photoshop you can apply a tween by going down here on your layer, putting in a keyframe, moving along and then moving the object across and then it'll create a tween but the spacing between the movement is equal so it moves a bit like robotically which is okay for some movements um, but for a lot of movements in animation you don't want spacing like that as you can see equal spacing similar um, if you wanted to do a squash and stretch you'd have to convert the object to smart object first um, apply a transform keyframe and then we'll squash him a little bit like that so it does a little squash but once again that would look a little bit nicer if you had the ability to ease into the movement and ease out of the movement a little bit. So I've been looking around online and I found this script here. If you just Google Photoshop easing script, it should come up, it's on GitHub. I'll also put a link in the description. So you just download that script. Um, it gives you some instructions to load the script into Photoshop but doesn't show you any instructions on how to actually use it. So I've just been filling around with it and I think I figured out mainly how to use most of it. So I'll do my best to show you what I've discovered. And if you figure anything else out, um, let me know in the comments below. So to apply the script, I'll show you, uh, we'll just turn this one off. So if we're gonna move the object across the screen, I found that with the script you have to make sure it is a smart object otherwise it won't work so turn it into a smart object and we'll put down one keyframe so say we want to move it somewhere over here what you do is make note of that little dialog box of how many pixels you've moved it so let's say we want to move it 840 pixels so that's how far we want to move it. So go ahead and open up your scripts dialog and find the Photoshop easing script. Open that one up and then you've got a bunch of information here. So firstly you can do a bunch of different ease in and ease outs. So there's a quad one, cubic, quart and so on. Um, I'll put up a little video that will just show you a bit of a cheat sheet of what each one looks like. I'll also put another link in the description to the website that I got that from and it just shows you what each, visually, what each one means. Um, my favorite ones are Expo, Quint and Back. So I'm just going to use an Ease In and Out Expo. I'm going to do it over 20 frames, the duration. And then you've got Scale, which I'll touch on next for when we do a squash and stretch but just for moving it from one side to the other, we've got this one. So I had 840. So to work out to make it go uh, right or left, if you want it to go right horizontally, you put in a positive number. If you want it to go left, you put a um, minus in front of it. With vertical, if you want it to move up, you've got to put in a minus number and if you want it to move down, you just put in a positive number. So if I put in 40 as well, you'll just see it move down a little bit. And that's applying the ease in and ease out. Oh, there's a weird funny glitch with the Expo one, but uh, all you gotta do is delete that last keyframe and it's fine. So what it's done is it's moved it across and it's got some ease in and ease out to it goes whoosh so you get a little bit more of a nicer movement rather than if you were to use the regular tween which is just a bit more lifeless slowly moving across 
Whereas the E's tween, much more energy and interest. And you can fiddle around with the different E's in and E's out to have different stuff. I just like the Expo because it's really slow then quick. That's really obvious that it's been applied. So what it's doing is it's just placing down keyframes in between here. So if you want to undo it, you have to keep pressing undo until all keyframes are gone, or you can just highlight and delete all the keyframes and then try another, try another one. So the hardest thing about this easing script is you do have to remember and do a bit of trial and error with how many pixels you want to move it by. And I'll just demonstrate what happens if I were to, and I've just created a shortcut, but really quickly, if you were to just put in, say, you want to move it by 100 and we'll just use the easing quad. Just so you know, see it moves down. Which is a bit weird because you thought a positive number would move the object up the screen, but it doesn't. So just put a minus in front if you want the object to move upwards. All right, so that's how you apply a tween if you want it to move from one side of the screen to the other. Again, just move it initially and make note of how far and the pixel numbers that are written on there. So in that little dialog box, 718 by 12 pixels. Make note of that, just go back. Make sure you have the keyframe selected as well as the layer selected and then you apply the script. That's one of the one things he added. He said, have a file open with at least one keyframe created, the timeline set to that keyframe, and then that layer selected. So you have to make sure you do that when you apply the script, otherwise it won't work. I've also found that it only works on smart objects. It might work with effect objects as well, but when you just have it as a raster normal layer, uh, like with this regular tween, if you apply it, it doesn't work. So I'll just show that as well. So if I turn this, put a position here, and I go easing and say I want it to move 800 again, okay. Um, it moves it, but it doesn't play. It just randomly moves it, and if you Apple Z it, if you um, step backwards, sorry, it goes like that. Like it's put all the keyframes in. So make sure you've turned it into a smart object, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so last thing I wanna show you guys is the squash and stretch um, one. So the squash and stretch is a bit more complicated. Once again, select layer, add a keyframe. What you can do is you can go along, press the transform tool, and then work out how much you want to squash it by. But it, it involves a bit more math, maths because you've got to take note of, look at this info dialog box. You've got to take note of the height. So it's five, nine, six, and then you squash it down. So say if you want to squash it there, it's four, six, four. You've got to do the maths in between those two numbers. And then that's the number you're going to be putting in the dialog box. But, um, it might just be easier off uh, winging it. But what you need to do is make sure whatever you squish down from the top, you add to the width. So what'll happen is it squishes out evenly and maintains its mass. If you do this squash and stretch, it'll stay in the origin. So I'll just show you that now. Right, so let's do, we'll do ease in and out back because this one's interesting. So say we want to take about 200 off the height. So minus 200 and we're adding 200 to the width. Okay. And that's going to apply like a squash. So like that. It's a little fun little squash. But as you can see, it's staying in the middle of the origin which isn't helpful if you've got a background. So if you've got the ball on the ground, say your ground plane is here, just do a better color than the pink, your ground plane is here, then when he's squishing, he's come off the ground plane, but you want him to stay on the ground plane when he squishes. So what I found is when you apply the easing, so let's put, Let's do 
ease in and out quint. Do we have a 20 frames instead? So say we're gonna do 200 and minus 200. What you've got to do is you've got to put in, you can put in the same vertical height that you're minusing into here. And then that will closely keep it at the origin point. Um, so, so it's still a bit more convincing. It goes a little bit over the, over the origin point, as you can see. So that's where I was experimenting a little bit. I haven't quite, I don't think, nailed the maths of this. So if anyone else has any other ideas, let me know in the comments below. If you're a Photoshop animator and you wish you had those tweens, you've got them now by using this script. It's a little bit clunky, but um, if you want to stick in Photoshop and just have that ability to add a little bit of a tween to your image, then you've got it. And just remember, just head to this website and get it. I just thought I'd upload this tutorial because I couldn't find anything else online explaining how to use it. And I thought if someone else is also having trouble, this might be useful for you. So thanks guys. And let me know in the comments below if you discover any other cool things about the script or a better way of using it or you found some other tutorials that I haven't found. Um, and if you want any more tutorials on how to use Photoshop for animation, please let me know. All right, have a good one. Bye.